Hello everybody, it's Mike from Viz Academy. So you all know me, but if you don't, uh, my name is Michael and I'm a teacher for Viz Academy. Viz Academy is a rendering school that will teach you how to create beautiful visualizations, just like those that we're going to be trying to replicate during our webinars. Uh, so uh, today we're going to be working with our students scene and we're going to be but just simply uh, rebuilding it from scratch. So thank you, Camila, for um, giving us uh, this uh, scene. It's amazing and uh, everybody's going to find out about it quite soon. Uh, so uh, first thing first, we're going to be using a partially the scene created by our students. So we're going to uh, make sure to grab a couple of items from there. But the webinar is actually going to be from scratch. So we're going to try to give you all the necessary um, elements that you might actually need. At the same time, I'm going to make sure that, um, that all the files for this webinar are going to be added after the webinar. Uh, it's going to take us approximately an hour or two uh, to sort them because I still have a few leftover elements in here, so sorry for that. Uh, but uh, what you're going to get is this uh, floor plan, uh, which is going to give you all the information you need to uh, have before you start. This is almost uh, like you would be working with your client, but we're making it slightly easier for you, so you're going to be able to actually uh, do one shot, and if you want to you can build a little bit more but to be honest it's not going to be necessary uh, so uh, hello from a uh, minor hello uh, hello sir hello everybody it's nice to have you uh, so in our chat please make sure to ask questions I'm always open to a little bit of a conversation it's going to be a blast also guys remember that right now we are recruiting people for our next um, next group so make sure to join us for our next next 2024 uh, session where we're going to have new videos and a lot of new elements but we also would like to give you something extra which is uh, information uh, so Right now, the available dates are uh, visible on our website, that's Viz Academy Co. UK, and you can join our 6th January, um, January the 6th uh, um, group, where we're going to be also giving our students a full Autodesk suit or, and a lot, a lot, a lot of bonuses, like discounts, student licenses, and we are starting uh, some nice um, corporations. Uh, so, uh, Soon we're going to be also posting some extra, extra, extra content. So a lot is happening in the Viz Academy, but we didn't really come here to just talk about Viz Academy. We are here to model something beautiful. So how about we start with a simple clean scene? As I mentioned, we're going to be working with a, a WG file. So it's a CAD file. Um, so in this case, to open a CAD file, you obviously need to download it. A file import and import. Now, the file that I'm going to be looking for is uh, situated in my folder. So I'm just going to paste the um, the uh, route to it. And you can see that we've got uh, this beautiful um, um, uh, file and I'm going to now click on open. Uh, hello, Mike. Uh, good to see you. Good to see you too, Asim. Um, nice to have you guys. I, I can see that Krishna also joined us. Uh, Gordon, uh, Kuj, uh, we've got a lot of you guys, so nice to have you. Uh, so, uh, remember, um, all questions about 3ds Max, general industry stuff are welcome. Uh, so, if you have, an, uh, if you're open to that kind of conversation, I'm here to also uh, talk about that. So, I am not only going to be talking about my all, all of my clicks. Uh, so, uh, first thing first, we've got this AutoCAD WG DXF uh, import options. So. Potentially, we can change quite a lot in here, depending on what file we're getting. But to be honest, the most important um, file or element of this file uh, actually for us is to measure what kind of units it was made in. And lucky for us, it was made in centimeters. So uh, since it's in the centimeters, and we can actually prove this by opening this in Autodesk WG True Viewer, uh, we can just go ahead and go for it. 
So first, I'm going to go change the um, incoming file units to centimeters. By default, for some magical reason, some of you are going to have inches. Uh, so let's go ahead and just click OK on that. Hello from Algeria. Hello. Hi, uh, how are you, sir? Thank you very much. I'm really good. Uh, so uh, now, our file is loaded. A lot of times when you will be working with AutoCAD files, uh, the object that you load is going to be either blocked or it's going to have a lot of unnecessary stuff in it. For example, a bathroom that the uh, architect left over for some reason. We can delete it because uh, we don't need this kind of resource um, eating uh, for from that file. Next thing that you most likely would like to do is move the file closer to the zero. I am going to skip this step because in my case it's not really that far off so I'm going to keep it this way. But uh, typically it's going to be ginormous uh, amounts of uh, distance from zero and that's when you want to uh, change that also make sure that your units are set up correctly so go to customize units system settings and make sure that it's centimeter by centimeter because overall we're going to be working with that uh, Phoenix gaming hello hello um, um, hello from Ethiopia, hello from Algeria, hello from Pakistan, hello from... Uh, really nice to have you guys. Uh, so let's continue now. Uh, <clears throat> what do we have here? So uh, here we're going to be talking about um, our model. Uh, love from Mars. Okay, uh, <laughs> guess Elon Musk actually got there. And okay, so our file is going to be pretty simple. As you can see, it's simplified. Typically, you're going to see way more items on a file like this. But just so you all can follow up, we're going to uh, try to use the simplest objects, easiest solutions, and we're going to be cheating a lot. Uh, so let's go ahead and delete what we don't need. Oh, by the way, the file here has a little bit of a, a small a ruler. So if uh, you are going to be working with uh, W, um, if JPEG or any other file, you can use it as well. Mike, how, do, how to convert bump map to normal map? So there's no one way to do it, unfortunately, because uh, normal maps are typically going to have a little bit more uh, values uh, than just uh, the height. But uh, if you want to do that, I would recommend you to test out a very nice method where you can go for render element add, and there is a normal shading, C geometry normal, sh normal shading. So if you have this luxury to bump your map on some object, uh, actually the normal map is going to be able to, um, let's say, replicate this and that way you're going to be able to create your own bump map, the normal map, if you want to. It's not a perfect solution, but it is really good or good enough if you don't have any other solutions. Plus, there are some uh, online um, solutions that will allow you to uh, translate something but really you're not going to gain that much um, advantage because the file is still going to be quite uh, low quality so you're, it's not like you're going to gain something out of it uh, hello sir i'm from pakistan um, is it worthy to make 3d visualizations as a career i love to do archivist but um, i'm afraid of future ai will take our jobs uh, they took our jobs no honestly uh, you should embrace it because our AI overlords are going. Um, <laughs> no, honestly, uh, when it comes to AI, right now it's a toy, not a tool. It's progressively getting better and better. Right now, it is used to refine and perfect your craft. So don't think about it in a way that it's going to take your job. It's just going to make your job easier. Uh, so, what I mean is that we're going to be able to use it. And yes, if you're going to be bad at your job, regardless, Regardless of um, what you do, you're probably some people will not keep their jobs if they're bad at it. That is why we recommend joining this academy to be good at it and to be unreplaceable. So first, I'm going to just go ahead and set up my uh, grid because I want to be fast with this. I'm just going to go for vertex, midpoint, options, enable access constraints. So first we're going to just S. So in this case, we're going to make sure to, that this option is on. 
create the first box and this is when the lack of information is probably going to get to us uh, so first of all this file is definitely going to need a height uh, unfortunately uh, we don't have it in this file yet so I'm going to just uh, use all of the height from my memory and if I recall correctly it is supposed to be 520 uh, but I'm going to go ahead and uh, just add 560 because it's going to be easier for me to add some detail later on now with shift I'm going to select one of the polygons so press 4 on your keyboard to go to polygon and we're going to continue just building the walls yes I'm doing the uh, I'm building the walls this way because I found it to be quite optimal solution and in many cases it's just easier to do it this way and yes although uh, in some circumstances you would assume that creating uh, new lines for each element is going to be a better uh, way or some of you uh, uh, smarty pants are going to say hey Mike why don't you just extrude it because if I'm going to extrude everything this is what's going to happen yes it's still going to have some detail but fixing this is going to take me more time than just remaking it and I'm all about efficiency so uh, definitely I want to just keep it this way okay so we're going to shift drag it and we're going to continue shift dragging to each point that is important for us so for example we can see that here we've got uh, some places that the windows are supposed to be so we're just going to skip those and just move on to the next part here we've got the steps uh, which we are also going to be adding and we're just going to continue adding the incremental changes now this is a very a peculiar situation where uh, if I'm going to drag this element a little bit with shift we're going to just have this situation where uh, those objects are intersecting is it a bad thing um, honestly it's not but if I'm going to go a little bit further I can go over this element and it's just going to connect so I can either remove it I can add it or I can connect to it due to the fact that I am a little bit of a tight as uh, some uh, I am somebody who likes the, to keep uh, he his scenes tidy I'm just going to go ahead and use a bridge instead so bridge it is now we can remove this one line and convert uh, control backspace in many cases control backspace is the right approach okay as I said we're going to create some kind of ceiling at uh, 520 so I'm just going to make sure to create a line that's going to go through all of that I could just connect it but I don't have any prove that both sides are going to be identical because sometimes some elements are going to be moved so instead what I'm going to do to ensure that my line is exactly where I need it I'm going to go down to edit geometry select uh, my um, slice plane and we're just going to type in 520 uh, so we can just go ahead and slice it so slice it is and we've got a nice opening uh, created a lot of times I also like to mention that as Adding a little bit of extra uh, space at the bottom is actually recommended so it's going to neatly close your model overall because what we need is to create the windows openings so you can just cut them through and just like that with new 3ds max and uh, swift extrude you can just be done with it in a second uh, so that's a very handy way of modeling uh, if you would ask me uh, and since you was <laughs> since you are here you probably did so for I know for a fact that this uh, upper element of our um, of our scene also has steps so we need three steps in typical scenario it's going to be approximately uh, approximately around 60 centimeters but for this uh, in this case we're going to go for something around 50 because I know it's going to look nice so let's just go ahead and add 50 for this one line so it's going to be easier for us to keep this uh, in check so hello from Pakistan hello from Ar Algeria nice to have you guys hello sir um, I have a one doubt if you make the wall uh, all in one block and then I want to give material to one selected polygon how to give material to a selected polygon to give materials uh, to selected polygons as you put it all we need to do is select those polygons and depending on your settings you're either going to be adding the ID or you're going to be automatically applying those materials so for example right now you can see that in polygon material ID due to the fact that I've started with box those objects have multiple IDs so I can just select all of them set ID 1 here and then I can just select the part of the model I'm interested in and I can just go ahead and set ID number 2 thanks to that I can now move on and add 
or on a physical or any other material and uh, just uh, put it through multi-sub object material. Multi-sub object material will allow you to, uh, it's a host material that will allow you to uh, store multiple materials in just one sitting. So uh, what we can do is, for example, add two separate materials with different colors, different properties, different qualities, and just simply apply it to one object. This is just one of many op options we have, but I found this to be the most convenient, especially if you just want to add simple material to uh, one polygon or multiple polygons on an object. It's also going to be a good idea to uh, think about just detaching some parts if you really need it, but detaching is probably going to be something that I'm going to get a few comments on. No, you don't do it because you're going to create holes in your model. Yeah, you can do it if the holes are not going to put any light through and we're going to work against that. So. Now, what I also like to doing is making sure that we've got some kind of super huge cap on top of our scene. Uh, typically, I want to put nice boxes on top of my uh, buildings, but it all depends on your liking. Okay, so let's make sure to add a few more boxes, one for the top, one for the bottom. Uh, both of those boxes are going to be either black or just fully white, depending on what we prefer to do. Uh, so I'm just going to go ahead and apply this material as early as I can, because overall it's going to be a piece of cake for us anyway. Okay, so uh, the cheating starts uh, right now, because I'm going to just import the camera from the previous scene, so that we don't waste too much time looking for the right uh, shot. Uh, U UVW is optional. Uh, yes, UVW is typically optional because uh, right now in newer uh, versions of Corona, uh, we actually don't need a UVW mapping for most organic objects and actually most objects, uh, unless it's something that really needs uh, those uh, details. So how to create a dome light with Corona? How Corona has a different type of dome light. Uh, so uh, to create a dome light, you probably want to go to uh, simple um, HDRI, double click on Corona bitmap, and here we've got the environmental light. So for example, we can change it to dome and then set it exactly what, how you would set any other light. So this is pretty much it. Uh, this is your environment light and that's it. Uh, dome lights are, um, as an object, are essentially just ridiculously unrealistic. So um, adding an HRI instead cuts a few corners that previously were, uh, let's say, set by other rendering engines that don't really make a, a lot of sense. Okay, so since I've got all of me the walls at the moment, I'm going to uh, select the top object properties and we're going to display this element as box so I can see through uh, this uh, element and it's going to be just easier for me to put all the stuff inside. Now let's select this part and we're going to continue building our steps. So again, it's going to be a simple box. Uh, remember guys, this is a zero from, uh, it's from zero to hero. So I want to emphasize that we're trying to make everything as simple as possible so everybody can follow along. Now I've added a few length segment height segments for this object so it's going to be just a little bit easier convert this part to editable poly and we're going to add a few extrusions in this case we can again add shift extrude just like that deselect the top shift extrude uh, we can always uh, go for a few more details if we want to so for example I can just add another line around here and now deselect that part and make sure to do a bit of a swift extrusion uh, on this object because I don't want to be really uh, taking care of all the topology of my object because it's not no longer 2010 where everything has to be perfect topology. Yes, a lot of people will say, but Mike, it's important. Yes, it is, but uh, depending on what you're going to be doing with the object. So uh, in this case, I know that this staircase is going to be static object where we're not going to be doing anything with it. So um, you have to be this good to be that bad um, to make this kind of uh, choices. Now, 
We've got this object at the bottom, so this is our light blocker from uh, from the from below. Uh, what I also like doing with those is pr uh, putting them on minus one or minus two value. So those are going to be slightly below our floor. Uh, how or why does it make sense? Well, because now if I'm going to add another plane, so for example, I can just go from point in this area and just go ahead and place it right here in the corner of our room. Uh, let's clear out a few polygons because we actually don't need them, parameters one to one. And at this point, because of how our um, overall room looks like, it looks like we're going to need some kind of uh, floor. So at this point, I believe it's going to be a good idea to add a floor generator and just play a little bit with the plank size. Um, typically, you want to go for, uh, if you are a designer, you want to go for something that makes sense. Do not ever add some kind of um, three kilometers long uh, planks because it's just going to take away uh, the element of believability of, from your scene. So max width, let's set it to something around 25 because it's a reasonable amount. And you can see that we've got minimum and maximum length. I've set them both. And right now, the uh, minimum uh, row offset is a little bit, well, as you can see, it creates a lot of patterning. So I'm going to go ahead and open this so the pattern is broken. You can also go for a minimum and the maximum offset and it's just going to be like uh, the same method but on steroids. But in this case, uh, just minimum and maximum value in our length is going to be enough. Okay, so let's copy this object and move it slightly. Uh, awesome, <laughs> thank you, Omer. Um, but, um, Okay, hi Mike, please tell us more about dome light for sur uh, surface curve inspection. Um, not I think they work, but eggs are better. Um, surface curve inspection. I don't think you're going to need to do that uh, in Corona. So uh, in many cases, if you want to inspect your surfaces, you probably don't need to use dome lights because that's going to be a little bit um, that's going to be an upside down solution. Uh, in many cases, you just need to uh, check your model for any inconsistencies. Uh, if you want to check uh, your model for inconsistencies, I prefer to use uh, just a simple border option or adding a few turbo smooth uh, levels to check what exactly we're dealing with. Again, we're just going to make sure to apply this floor generator on our object due to the fact that, again, we're going to be also adding the same materials to all the steps. I could also create a separate floor generator for each of them, but I'm, gonna, I'm just going to be extremely lazy here and we're going to be able to cut this later with to produce the illusion that we cared. Uh, so we're going to just go ahead and create a few additional lines. So in my case, it's, let's just set it to 11. And we're going to then split it. So each individual plank is going to get their own mapping. But that's going to be explained a bit later. Uh, so let's go ahead and uh, just continue. At this point, uh, we have the most important elements, so our floor and our ceiling. We could also start rendering at this point, but we kind of need more items. Uh, but if I'm going to start adding items, what's going to get in my way constantly is the floor. And I absolutely hate it. So what I like doing, and this is a tip for all of you, just go ahead and toggle a layer explorer. Select two objects that are annoying, so uh, depending on what you're going to need. So let's right click, new layer, and we're just going to go ahead and add all the elements. So for example, we can now go for floor here. Oh, wait a second. Oh, they didn't know that there's that is here. Uh, okay, let's just... Um, Okay, I've got some cheat sheet now. Uh, didn't even know that, there, uh, that it's here. Okay. Uh, cheating. Uh, really, I didn't know. I absolutely, uh, I swear I didn't know that the model is here, but since it's here, we're going to just make it easier for me if I need to. Uh, so, hello sir, uh, from Pakistan. Hello, Art Studio. Nice to have you. Um, 
uh, most useful is floor generator and it's free uh, so yeah uh, floor generator is definitely going to be useful and the uh, free version is free so go for it but if you are going to be working commercially just consider going for the uh, let's say expanded version where you're going to have few more options than, than just the standard but for the starters the standard option is exactly what you need okay now the cheating begin begins so uh, we need to add windows because those are going to be the soul of this whole shot uh, yes there's a big gigantic column in the middle that is probably going to be a little bit more Im important but uh, because we're working with uh, chaos corona we're going to go ahead and click on open chaos cosmos chaos cosmos is a repository of models that we're definitely going to be using and abusing quite a lot uh, what i liked in it uh, the most is that it has gigantic repository of models that I use all the time and you can see that I've got quite a lot of things that I looked for so my absolute favorite is the Windows uh, category because well we're going to have a lot of them and I personally would like to see a few more um, options I like the window uh, 4647 because it's one of the most used models by me and the problem with it is that it's a small one and we need a gigantic window in here a, a pretty much five meters tall I don't even know how they make class like that but uh, what do we do with that well first of all we're going to uh, see that this object is now a proxy so because it's a proxy we're going to have to go for corona proxy and either uh, click on duplicate to mesh which is going to instantly load this object as a copy and we're still keeping the proxy or we can convert this object to editable mesh and then editable poly so I'm just going to keep um, working with the editable mesh convert to editable poly and let's go uh, so as I mentioned it's a little bit too small but at this distance and I'm saying we're viewing this object from quite afar um, so what we can do is just cheat uh, and that's exactly what we're going to be doing so first I'm going to scale this object slightly so it fits my windows let's just make sure that it's going to be exactly the size I need <clears throat> Also, you can see that we have to rotate it so we have the outside, actually the outside. And uh, again, this is a 3D visualization, so you don't have to be pixel perfect. Sometimes when you go a little bit uh, above and or just uh, get, uh, well, sometimes when some objects are going to be intersecting, it's not really going to be the end of the world. So we're going to just go ahead, select the top. And now since we scaled it already, and I don't want this to be that much thicker I'm just going to move the elements and because I don't want to be super precise with it I'm just going to go ahead and move those elements in editable poly mode and yes I'm going to go and make sure that all of those parts are going to be slightly nested inside of the wall why because I don't want any kind of light bleeding uh, or light to shine through some small cracks between the window and the wall and nobody is going to be looking for any detail like that as as long as the windows make sense so don't waste your time on adding too much detail on your windows do not go for that because in most of the cases you're going to be left with no um, no uh, real benefit from it so just don't uh, because as I said it's going to be better to just apply this make sure that it's just like this where it's slightly inside of the wall nobody will care about it and even if an object is outside of our camera scope uh, what we can do is either if we really need it we can move it uh, a little bit further but uh, since our camera is not going to be seeing it because uh, all we're going to be seeing is this area we just don't have to care um, okay thanks a lot I'm from Syria this uh, will this be uh, recorded yes and after the webinar we're also going to be adding all the files that you can see uh, I mean the W uh, the kind of file and probably most of the elements that I can share with you so all that's going to be modeled during this webinar uh, hello Mike I'm from Algeria hello uh, nice to have you uh, how's the weather in Algeria right now um, can you please tell us about your uh, most used plugins and scripts briefly uh, Mohammed if you would be so kind and refer yourself to uh, one of our webinars it would be lovely but honestly it's a very short list it's uh, 
floor generator. I love it. It's really useful. I also use Polyglove because it's quite useful. A copy two, uh, which is one of the plugins that I am actually going to use literally in a second. And I use it all the time. Copy two is a game changer when you're using 3ds Max. For some reason, they don't have it uh, have this um, let's say functionality in 3ds max yet but um, progressively with more ram more uh, scenes and more objects in your scene you're going to need to work with some objects uh, on one um, in one way and some other objects in a, in a different way. So uh, what I'm trying to say is that it's not unheard of and it's not uncommon to have multiple 3ds Max windows open and uh, to uh, work between the scenes. So for example, here I've got a few objects that I'm later going to be copying into my R scene to have a little bit of a go with that. But at the moment, uh, I can just right click in any position and from the original scene from Camila um, we're, we can actually select the camera that we have here so it's essentially in the very similar position uh, we can click on copy to and then I can go back to what I've created and paste from so it's basically going to be loading the exact object in the exact position into my scene and you can copy objects because a lot of times you're not going to have a cool repository like this uh, but you're going to be adding objects from your folders because you just downloaded the model from uh, your favorite website and you have to use it and this is when this uh, gets a little bit tedious if you're not going to be able to um, copy it fast enough uh, because uh, going to lobby then file save load Dun, dun. It takes time and I hate it. Uh, so it's better to do it. Uh, what is a USD? Is it useful? Uh, so USD is a universal. Um, it's a universal definition format. I don't know uh, what the acronym exactly is, but it is going to be extremely useful because it's like uh, Latin, but for 3D software. So if an object is created in USD, it's universal description format. Um, it means that it's going to be useful from uh, one rendering engine in another with almost no losses in quality and at the same time uh, you're probably going to be able to um, uh, because it's universal scene description you're probably going to be able to open the same scene from 3ds max in unreal engine uh, from uh, if you're going to be using uh, let's say corona to render you're going to also be able to use the universal description to use with uh, use it use the same scene or cooperate with somebody else who works with v-ray or blender um, it's going to be a, an extremely good thing. Uh, Mike, a vegetation modeling tutorial. When? Probably at some point. We're definitely going to uh, make sure to, to create one, but I am not so sure if it's that much needed due to the fact that we've got a lot of options to just download it instead. And downloading is something that we definitely want to go for instead of modeling. So. As I mentioned, uh, a lot of times your floor is going to be annoying and unhiding it is going to be annoying as well because it's going to come back and come back and come back. So what I'm doing is selecting both of my floor objects in this case, freezing them and changing the display to box as well because this way I am sure that I've got that floor already built. It's here so I don't have to worry about it. But thanks to the fact that uh, we are smarter than a regular people, um, I mean you guys, not me, uh, we can just make sure to uh, use this to our advantage. And again, now this doesn't obscure our view and it's easy to find whenever we need it and it's easy to select. So Layer Explorer is an a very powerful tool in 3ds max i know we just uh, we're just scratching the surface but let's go now it's been half an hour so let's make sure to build another object here i'm going to go for a circle and we're just going to create this bar area uh, because it's going to be actually quite important for our scene i'm not going to be super precise with it because i don't need to but if i would have to be i would just uh, do it the same way and just realign the object make sure to go to circle interpolation and add the steps uh, we're going to go for 24 steps or something around that, so the object is going to be quite neatly dense. Let's go for extrusion. 
extruded a little bit. Uh, so by a little bit, I, were, I mean we're going to go go for 80 centimeters, 85 centimeters, because that's what the bar height is supposed to be in this scene. So we're just going to go ahead and convert this object to editable, uh, editable poly. And now we can go ahead and co convert it a little bit further, because we can definitely see that uh, there is supposed to be some kind of cutout. But how do we do it? The easiest way to do it is to actually create it. So we're going to select the top and bottom. We can go for inset and just apply as much as we need. And as soon as we're at the point, we're just going to apply it. And how do we get rid of the top and bottom? The easiest way is to one click bridge. And that's it. Now, you can also see that there are some elements that we're supposed to be deleting. And in this case, uh, we could just select what we need ring it and just start deleting what we don't need and then cap it. But since it's actually not going to be necessary for us to do that, I'm just going to shift drag it and it's gone. Uh, really simple, uh, no, um, no extra, um, well, no extra steps needed. Let's go ahead and copy this object as well. Um, I'm going to be intentionally imprecise with this because when I use this object, I'm going to be able to add a little bit of more realistic distance here. We're going to add a Alt 1 Swift loop around the object. And now I can just go ahead and delete what I don't need because you can see that what we only need is the area we're interested in. So how do we do it? The easiest thing is to double click here and delete what we don't need, then double click and delete what we don't need. Okay, but we're left with this gigantic cro croissant that we need to uh, cup some uh, some way. So in this case, we're going to press to on our keyboard, select this bread, uh, sorry, select this uh, border, this is it. Deselect two edges, so edge number one and edge number two. Pretty simple. Now we're going to go for a bridge and we've got it all done. Um, and now, uh, are we recording? Yes, we are. Uh, how do we send renders for the next webinar? Uh, that's going to be disclosed quite soon, but it the uh, whole idea is going to be exactly the same as the last time. Uh, so you're going to be emailing those to our special email uh, where we're going to be uh, taking submissions for the next webinar where we will be um, reviewing your interior and maybe exterior work depending on uh, the mood uh, and how many uh, images we're going to get. So zero to make sure that it's going to be nice and on the floor. Uh, so now we've built most of the objects, but uh, if we look at this um, reference image that we have, we're also, we have those planters that look quite fancy. Uh, so we need to create those. But uh, to be honest, I don't want to waste too much of your time uh, creating just uh, simple cylinders. So I'm going to uh, talk about the most um, important or the most uh, exciting element of this whole build. And that is going to also allow you to be quite creative with your work. So uh, somebody already mentioned that floor generator is a very good uh, plugin and I it was probably me. Uh, so we're just going to continue uh, with that notion. So uh, convert this object to a double spline. And just to show you how useful this plugin is, we're going to create something that's going to resemble this planter. Uh, so let's go ahead and create a nice plane. In this case, it doesn't matter how big, tall and small it's going to be. Just make sure that the, we affect the pivot and move it somewhere closer to the edge. So it's easier for us to, uh, to work with this object. Okay, so <clears throat> now in the separate scene, as you can see, because right now we're not in our main scene, I'm in a separate scene to just make sure that it's easier to work with uh, and everything is easier to read. So floor generator, Okay, we're adding it in. And you can instantly see that um, whatever measurements we have, those are not correct. First, I'm going to change the minimum offset to zero. Uh, bevel also isn't needed. You can see that those are simpler objects. So bevel goes away. Now, the maximum width is going to be set to, let's say, four centimeters, three, two, three looks fine. Now, the length doesn't change. But what we're going to be changing here is the ground length and width. So first, let's set it to zero. And then we're just going to add a slight amount in here, which is extremely powerful. But again, we kind of want this to be longer, uh, sorry, shorter than longer. So I want to first of all, make sure that this object is going to uh, to have a little bit different um, general setting. So direction, 
go. Now we've got the right direction and we can just uh, adjust the plane parameters, for example, the width, if we need to. The trick that I liked using, and I recommend you to have this in mind, but it's really not necessary. I'm going to tell you why. Uh, so is to go to measurements. Uh, if you're going to have to work precisely, we've got three, three, five in length of this shape. So if I'm going to apply the same length here, so three, three, five, we're going to more or less have exactly the same. Uh, size uh, or let's say length as the shape we have here. So this is a very cool thing to know. Uh, so if you're going to be working with precise tiles or something that actually needs measurements, that's going to come back, uh, come back to, um, well, bite you or not. So path the form. We want to go for path the form, but not the path the form world scale modifier, but the simple one uh, because we are simpletons. Uh, so let's go for path the form go to none and we're going to click on our object. Okay, this doesn't look good at all. That is why we're going to have to change this to different um, direction. So as you can see, yeah, but no. Uh, so we need to rotate it by 90 degrees. Uh, so first we're going to go for rotation 90. <clears throat> You know what? We might have to continue uh, with a little bit different values. So right now, because of the way I've set my uh, pivot, it actually looks a little bit bad. So we're going to flip it. It's quite simple, right? So thanks to this fact, we've got really nice uh, covering of our object and our shape is quite uh, catch because right now it's uh, well a nice shape that's very curvy and it would be a nightmare to do it otherwise and look at that our object has a limited length so it's good because we can use this if this is something we want but at the same time this might be a problem because you might not get the luxury to uh, measure everything because you just don't have time for that so if for this we're going to click on auto and that automatically just uh, stretches the object to cover the whole shape quite easy we can always go back to the floor generator and have a little bit of a go with our maximum width and size and whatnot for example uh, I can also in enlarge this size so in the plane so it's going to be easier to do so now when we do have a no do know how to create those planters I feel that uh, it's not going to be a problem if I'm just going to tell you that the planter that we're working with is going to be approximately 85 centimeters tall so i'm just going to take all of it and copy it uh, we've got some kind of pampas grass out here so we're definitely going to be using it uh, so that's it Pl uh, plans look cool for my personal work but where to download any website recommendations uh I'm not sure what you mean. Uh, the plans are going to be downloadable from our uh, website uh, once we're done with the webinar. Uh, but uh, please wait until I um, correct or uh, polish a few elements, but it is going to be in the description of uh, this video. Uh, so we right click and paste the element in. So it's going to be nice and easy. The problem is that right now I copied it, but all of the plants are now looking a little bit strange. Why is that? That's due to the fact that my objects are actually proxies. So uh, how many proxies do I have here? So what is the proxy here? So first of all, the cylinder is not a proxy, but there is this plant and maybe another one. One, two, three, nope. So there's another proxy object here. That's, oh, that's a group. Group, ungroup then. And let's, oh, those are two plants. Hmm, what do we do here? First of all, we've got um, the file or let's say the uh, object geo that is added from um, our drive. So we need to make sure that we shift T to make uh, to ensure that this object is going to be found. In most of the cases, you're not going to have the same issue because the object that you're going to be applying or uh, is going to be already on your drive and I'm using my student's scene. So that's why I've got different um, route to some of the elements, but we can just refresh, see what exactly we're looking for. So in this case, we're going to just uh, clear out the path. So let's um, remove missing assets, highlight enable, um, strip path, and we're going to make sure to force the path onto this object, make path absolute. So now it actually looks for the files on my hard drive and not just in the folder of the main file. Uh, so it's just easier for me to do it this way. Now, if I'm going to copy this object, what you're going to notice is in our scene, this 
plant is going to be actually visible and that's exactly what we needed. Uh, so we're going to get to the more juicier elements of our, uh, of our webinar in a second, but uh, we're just going to have to copy this object a couple of hundred times and just two. Uh, so one, okay, let's move it away. Um, and, and again, don't be too precise with your visualizations. Nobody's going to uh, see any difference between five and 10 centimeters. I mean, you don't have to be sloppy, you don't have to do a bad job, but you're definitely not obligated to be um, super precise with uh, 3D visuals. Okay, so let's move it here, perfection. Okay, looks fine to me. Now, um, with those objects in position, with our camera in position, we basically created uh, most of the scene that is our foreground. Uh, so let's uh, probably, what we're probably going to have to do at some point is actually think a little bit about our, um, <clears throat> our column, uh, our chair, our uh, tables. So those are going to be mostly copies of a copy of a copy. So it's going to be rather easy. Uh, why don't use array? Array would be quite okay in this case, but it wouldn't give me any precision. I just needed to copy it to the left and then to the right. So array would allow me to get two more copies, but again, it's not going to be that uh, good of a deal. Um, sorry, I'm late, Emil. No worries. Uh, nice to have you. Um, for my personal work. How do you copy an object from one scene to another scene? Uh, so this is the plugin that I was mentioning. mentioning. Uh, it's called Copy2. Uh, some people also use CopyTor. Uh, Asha, uh, hello Mike, is it uh, is this live uh, is going to be downloadable uh, in the Visigademy YouTube channel? Yes, it is going to be on our channel. Uh, so you're going to be able to uh, rejoin it as an, uh, at any moment. Also, DM me if you want to on our special, special group uh, so I can send you a little bit more uh, resources if you want to remake this scene on your own. Now, uh, let's go ahead and uh, continue. By the way, guys, uh, just to remind you, this Academy is uh, a rendering school that will teach you how to create ren renders just like those created by our student. And today we're actually working with Camila's uh, work. And this whole scene was created by our student from scratch. Uh, obviously, some elements are downloaded uh, and some elements are uh, well um, built by her, but mostly this is her work. And uh, the let's say the uh, all congratulations for whatever effect we're going to get uh, are supposed to go to her because she did the uh, well majority of the hard work. Uh, thank you so much. You're the best. <laughs> no, no, you're the best. Uh, thank you very, very much uh, for joining in. Uh, Mike, uh, I put 3D models in library in HDD and textures and mega scans, assets and textures and but da da. Is it uh, right? And do we need to save our 3ds Max file in faster drive? Um, it's not going to be that important to have a faster drive to use your scene, uh, but it is important where what type of drive your 3ds Max is taking the resources from. And that's going to have impact on how long it takes for 3ds Max to open uh, your scene to start the rendering because it's going to be calling upon those resources each time you start your rendering. Uh, so let's go to the lobby items file where we're going to be talking, uh, going through what? Oh yeah, there's there it is. Uh, so we've got this set. So first of all, I've got a very simple set of chair uh, and a chair and a table. Uh, nothing fancy, so I just reserve my right <laughs> to copy those because it's really going to be uh, just a way for us to save a little bit of time. You can get uh, similar or the same chairs uh, from uh, from Chaos Cosmos. If you don't want to uh, look for something similar, you can go to, for chair 27 and also use a chair uh, 48, uh, 13, uh, because those are going to be sufficient for this scene. Uh, so let's just go ahead and uh, not waste your time on me uh, just uh, modeling or remaking those chairs. So let's uh, copy paste those. 
Again, uh, I know that it would be fun to go through uh, the chair modeling and uh, in typical situation, I would love to do that, but uh, we don't have four hours uh, because that's, uh, that's how long it would take us to build all the objects from scratch, but I'm going to cho show you the most juiciest parts of this scene. So for example, how to create this pyramid that's going to be procedural. Um, uh, it's going to uh, give you the ability to edit it and how to create those columns and how to save a little bit of your RAM because that's really going to have a lot of impact on how your scene and how your computer performs when creating something into the Max. So optimizing your scene is actually one of the most important traits that we teach our students because whenever you will be working with 3ds Max, you will run into some RAM, RAM issues or some kind of issue that is going to be resource related and I do not expect you to be using some kind of beefy computers that you bought for a gajillion billion dollars it's just about using a regular laptop uh, with not um, not a big amount of RAM uh, we recommend our students to have at least 16 gigabytes of RAM the more the merrier but you can also use approximately 8 gigabytes to have really amazing results but uh, because it's not about uh, how much ram you have because that's going to be uh, let's say our secondary quality of the computer but how fast your your processor is uh, so in this case i'm going to and uh, now place this object and um <clears throat> you can see that well it's uh, going to be a quite hard thing to add it on uh, some kind of um, angle or at some kind of arch. So how do we do it in 3ds Max? First, what you can do is try using effect pivot only and move the pivot so it's going to be exactly where you need it and just move this object so it's going to be moving around some kind of pivot, obviously. But what I like to do is make sure to uh, apply the pivot and align it to some other object. So for example, this circle will do. Uh, we can apply pivot by pivot, X, Y, Z position, and we're just going to click OK. In this case, I am going to be almost as precise, but more, uh, pre uh, more precise than I was a second ago. And in this case, we're just going to go for a copy. OK, and to create two more copies, I'm just going to go ahead and go for that. Uh, I highly recommend you to work with proxies for your chairs and objects that are going to be highly replicable because most of the time when there's going to be a lot of replication in your scene, you're going to run into an issue with your RAM if you're going to have too many, many gajillion billion polygons in your scene. Also, remember that when placing objects in your scene, you should always pay attention to how tall and where the objects are placed. A lot of objects that you're going to be downloading from uh, off the internet uh, are going to have a lot of problems. For example, pivot wise, right now those objects are supposedly on zero, but this is due to the fact that their pivots are incorrect. To fix the pivot the fastest way, what you can do is either use the newest uh, Corona tools or we can just refer to the older tools, go to edit, transform toolbox, go to center, and then Z origin. And in this case, you can see that uh, if I affect pivot only, you can see that all the pivots are now on the Z position. So let's just go ahead and add them zero. And they're exactly supposed to be on the floor, but for some reason, they're not. So we're going to investigate why are you not on the zero? Once again, let's click you the Z. Okay center z let's reset your x form and see how okay for some reason it just didn't bother to uh, get the memo that it's supposed to be uh that big maybe it's just uh well something happened okay now it's exactly on the floor that is also why we place our objects up potentially our floor on minus one. So once I get to the point where I'm working with uh, my floor generator, the floor top is on zero. So it's easier for me to place the objects exactly where I need them. Here, we're going to go for exact same treatment. So go for edit, transform toolbox, R, and let's Z it. So again, we're going to place this on zero 
And look at that, it actually starts to make sense. Uh, this is going to be a trickier uh, thing because this is a group. A lot of times groups are going to be a little bit peskier because you're going to have objects that are overscaled and the pivot it might not work the same way. So Z, actually this time it worked flawlessly, so we're going to move it. Now, only the table uh, plates are left behind. Uh, we've got two options. Either we're going to go ahead and just move them like this, and that's going to be the end of the story. Or we can do it like Ikea does and uh, just uh, let's go ahead and put it somewhere. Let's make sure that we reset the X form, Z that. And uh, since the pivot is in the right position, we can go for select and place and just select and place it wherever we want on the surface of the objects. This is also going to ensure a little bit more believability in our object positioning because it's going to be more uh, natural. So it's definitely going to be a good thing to have. Okay, so I think we're going to, we know the drill, we need to copy a few more chairs, a few more tables. Uh, so I'm going, I'm just going to grab those from uh, the our students uh, scene and we're going to get to the juicier part where we actually start creating the column. So everybody is going to have the right idea what we're actually uh, on about. So let's, actually I need to make sure that all of those proxies are correct in this scene as well. So let's refresh this. Mm -hmm. Okay, now let's skin this, let's strip the path, uh, let's strip it, uh, let's go again, right click, set path. So, uh, sorry, let's make the path absolute, that's just a missed click from me. Uh, okay, my path absolute, now it's going to work flawlessly. Um, how about the floor generator plane? Can we download it from a uh, floor? Of, I'm not sure what you mean. Uh, Arch life, you can right click. Okay, uh, I see that there's a lot of questions going on. Wait a second, I need to read through. Uh, Mike, I put through the models uh, library. Okay, can you make a tutorial on different types of lighting? Uh, what do you mean? Like interior or exterior? I think we can do it. Uh, yeah, why not? Um, having your project, uh, having your project, all its um, and all its files and the 3ds Max install itself on the fast M2 NVMe uh, SSD drive does not have its advantages for loading times. It doesn't improve a viewport FPS though. It doesn't. It does? No, it's. Uh, I have a question. If you copy a Corona proxy instead of instancing it, does it still have the speed improvements from a proxy since it uh, sources it from the same pr proxy file? That's exactly what happens. If uh, It doesn't matter if you. Um, go for copy or instance. Copies are actually consuming slightly less RAM, uh, so the scene doesn't have to remember 10,000 objects that are the same and that need to react to one another. Copies are actually friendlier for the uh, proxies, but actually they're not going to have that much um, difference RAM wise. Uh, so yes, it still has the same advantage when you create a copy of a proxy. How to convert simple model into proxy? How to how about floor plane? Can we download it? Uh, you can right click on the object and viewport and then options in the right proxy folder. Uh, okay. Uh, how about the WG? Can we download it uh, from alone? Yes, we're going to be giving you that file. No worries. Uh, just right after our webinar. Uh, Assalamu alaikum uh, to you too. Um, I need to learn how to respond to that because th there's a there's a whole thing, right? Uh, so uh, let's go ahead and copy those elements that I'm interested in. So first, let's hide those elements that I'm not interested in. Just elements, elements, elements. Hide selection, Shift L. Okay, so now we're going to be copying some proxies like that, like that and like that. I know it's cheating, but I I told you I will be. Uh, but <laughs> I don't think you really need to see me copying a lot of objects. So copy two. Let's wait for it. <clears throat> Greetings from Ukraine. Nice to have you, Lexi. Uh, so let's continue. Uh, when Corona Render 11 will be released? I don't have the precise um, precise info on that, but expect it soon, uh, definitely soon. Uh, we're currently in the works on a video on it, uh, so uh, yes, uh, you've seen the material in my case. Uh, we're just going to be copying a lot. Uh, so uh, we're going to just uh, continue, and again, we are waiting 
for the file to load. A lot of times uh, 3ds Max likes to play a trick on me and it crashes, so we have to be a little bit patient. Okay, this time it's not the time. I think I'm going to save the file just to make sure that we are not going to lose our progress because overall we're quite deep into our scene. Let's place this in the right position, more or less like this. Okay, works more or less fine. I'm not going to be super precise about all the elements. It's not important at the moment, um, but uh, we're just going to be placing them here. And on the floor, the blue line for me, so perfect. Everything is exactly positioned. Now let's grab a few more items. So this is going to be just me planting the, the elements from one scene to another. So uh, here you can you have a very nice situation, or let's say a perfect scenario where if you have a little bit less RAM and you don't want to proxify as such a simple object, because in this case, it's not really going to be that needed. Or you may want to add some kind of additional modifiers to it, what you can do instead is convert the object to Adobe Poly real quick, then go to group, open recursively, check what we're dealing with, and since those are very simple objects, what I can do is apply a so-called Pro Optimization. So Pro Optimizer, and in this case I'm going to quickly uh, ask you a question guys. Um, Tell me at what point or what percentage will you see any difference between the object on the left and on the right? Uh, so let's calculate both. Okay, and we're going to lower it. So 80%. Do you see any difference? Nope. 50%. Uh, Do we see any difference in lighting or something? Nope. Uh, let's go for 25%. Well, something happened, but can we see visible, uh, actually difference on those objects? No. So let's go for 5%. Okay, that's when the object gets a little bit deformed because what we were doing is we were massacring this object from the very beginning. So let's go for something around 10% where we still cannot see any difference uh, between those two. And use instead of using 100% of that object, we're going to be using super optimized version of the same object. Uh, my suggestion is to always keep the texture prior to adding any optimization, convert the object to a little poly once you're done because otherwise on load of your scene you're going to revert those changes to make this easier for me i'm going to attach those objects and right now i'm rocking 11 uh, thousand polygons for an object that doesn't even need that many um, but it's going to be far out in the back of my scene so i'm just going to be using it as the optimized version so not always proxy is going to be the only solution to your optimization especially if you plan on adding uh, some additional changes to the object what that we're, you're dealing with file save as and uh, let's go for some file saving real quick because you know uh, so start and let's call it stream so we can know that it's live uh greetings from ukraine which corona okay um no release date for Corona 11 yet, sadly. I usually put uh, it to 10% high density meshes, especially. Don't forget to put uh, keep the texture on. Yes, thank you, Maximus. That's absolutely amazing of you. Thank you. Hello from Pakistan. Hello, hello. Nice to have you. Uh, so. <clears throat> It's actually so nice to uh, have uh, such a nice audience uh, that is actively working with me. So paste from just to copy a few objects. And now let's uh, add this sofa. Uh, I should have actually moved that scene, but I was a little bit afraid that everything is going to be, uh, let's say, misaligned and I'm going to lose some progress. So let's put it here. And now we can actually use the array modifier because it's going to be easier. So let's go for offset, minus one in this case. Uh, it's going to be easier this way. And we've got plenty of those sofas, nice copies, fast, easy, nonsense free. And we can just make this happen for us. Hello from Turkey. Hello to you too, Grim Grims. Uh, how long have you been working in 3ds Max? I find this question uh, quite intriguing because it uh, it splits into, uh, let's say, um, some parts. Because the first time I opened 3ds Max, I looked at the AI, uh, sorry, <laughs> UI, it's just the word of the day, I guess. Um, I looked at the uh, UI, I created the box, and I never used 3ds Max for approximately two weeks because 
it was just overwhelming uh, so I had on and off like that for a year and uh, one company was just uh, hey Mike if you learn how to create stuff in 3ds max we're going to hire you and me being very young I was like wow I already have a proposal of a job if I'm going to be actually good at it. <laughs> that was actually quite funny. And uh, well, they keep their pro kept their promise. I have spent a year uh, learning from uh, well, learning how to create something in 3ds Max. But the uh, the very 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 first try was thanks to my friend that um, yeah, well. Um, his father was working with 3ds Max at the time, and uh, he was re. Um, let's say he was an architect, and he was changing his um, profession. So he had uh, the 3ds Max uh, CD laying around uh, because the first 3ds Max I used was 3ds Max 9. So I started approximately in 2006. No, yeah, two, approximately 2005 or 2006, and that's when I tried for the first time uh, something with 3ds Max. But it took approximately year, year and a half to get me going with something that was useful. I burned approximately three hard drives along the way, so I have nothing to show from that uh, from that period. But long story short. Um, I'm approximately 15, 16 years in the industry, uh, so I kind of do have some experience, but uh, I was working on and off in 3ds Max because um, I had a few, let's say, months, years at a time of, uh, let's say, stops uh, due to reasons, uh, but honestly, it's approximately 15, 20, uh, 16 years. If we really want to uh, go into uh, be uh, when I first was introduced to 3ds Max, it would be almost 20 years ago. Uh, so uh, that that's the story. Uh, <clears throat> okay, I'm stealing again. Uh, so <laughs> here we've got a simple object and uh, honestly, I'm just going to show you how it looks like. It's a cylinder and a box. It's not something that we really have to deal with, but if you want to copy it, it's going to be in the file. I mean, in the uh, card file. So I'm just going to copy it and quickly add it in to our scene. So it's easier for us to build. I know it's a little bit, um, I, you know what? Instead of copying those objects one by one, I'm just going to grab a bunch of them and we're going to move on to our um, scene management rendering and we're going to actually do some nice stuff with those juicy elements um, so allow me to just copy a few more objects just let's let's grab them actually I need to just grab one more so where is it this is it okay we got the column copy it okay uh, what is the difference between copy door and copy two my colleague works with copy two and I have copy door uh, on my rig so it depends actually there's no real difference the copy 2 has a little bit uh, simpler UI and by default it's going to be here so it's just easier copy tour has um, if I recall correctly it has uh, the copy options on your toolbar so that's the difference but you can optimize both to do the same and copy tour can store multiple files while copy 2 just stores one if I recall correctly but if you buy <clears throat> the premium version you're actually going to get almost the same function functionality there's no real difference both are extremely good uh, uh, well that's a long time dude I've been using 3ds a blender for four years and now in uh, into 3ds max for about one and a half years uh, oh yeah uh, Maximus if you um, care to tell us a little bit more about your story go ahead and go for it it would be lovely to hear about that uh, so uh, I heard a lot of um, a, a lot about people switching from Blender to 3ds Max. Although the comment section on some of our videos is just a gold mine, uh, I must say that some Blender users uh, just don't get uh, uh, that. Well, people do have can have preferences, and they just sound like um, I don't want to now um, insult anybody because that's not my. Uh, my, not my goal, but they sound like football fans just uh, saying no You cannot like this team because I like this team and I like it more because I like it more uh, So uh, it's quite funny to uh, see those comments and uh, I love them keep them coming uh, They help us a lot obviously uh, so 
What's your story? What's your story? Um, okay, uh, how can I find my first client as a freelance visualizer? Uh, Alexei, uh, first thing first, get yourself a portfolio. Make sure that you have enough work to at least uh, enough work that's going to be interesting uh, to your client. I don't need you, uh, you don't need to create some kind of uh, top quality um, uh, contest winning um, uh, work. It's just that it should be elegant, it should be what your client needs and what you like working on. Because when it comes to your portfolio, remember that the most important part is 50, more than 50% of your portfolio should be stuff that you feel inspired with, uh, stuff that you like working with, and stuff that you feel that you're good at. Rest should be just um, stuff that is either contests or something that you know is going to bring you clients but you hate it. Uh, so for example, bathrooms or kids' rooms, those are really going to be really nice good uh, starting points. But most importantly, try to add as many objects that you are interested in passionate about because uh, people don't just hire you to do the job. Yes, so, uh, most of them do. But if you really want to start working with somebody, have connection, you're going to be both passionate about what you're doing because you're not stealing your money from your clients, you're giving them some value for the money. So it really is important to be easy to work with, to be somebody who's uh, actually a solution, not a problem. Because if I'm going to be hiring anybody ever, uh, it's just to make my work easier. I typically am going to be capable of learning anything. But if somebody is good enough and nice enough to do it for me, and I like spending time with that person or at least communicating via some kind of chat, Skype or whatever, it's going to be better and I want to work with a human. So be a nice person, that's the first thing. Uh, but also portfolio. Uh, that's a long time, okay. Uh, not Turkey. Uh, Turkey, not Turkey. I will learn your uh, country's name, uh, okay. Is the uh, is this workshop safe so I can watch it uh, under time? Yes, it is, uh, Sohalia. Uh, so you can, you can. Oh yeah, uh, sure. I only have two hundred characters for my message, though. I'll keep it short below here. Uh, hey, Mike, glad to catch you live, Philip. Thank you. Uh, do you? Uh, what do you use? Uh, batch rendering uh, cameras. I use plugins called Batch Cam, but it doesn't seem to work anymore. I don't use any plugins like those, uh, mostly because I. I like to have as uh, bare bones 3ds max for my students as i can to show them that 3ds max is not like other software where you have to first install 25 plugins because uh, before you can click because otherwise you're not doing this the most optimized way ever uh, you have to first learn how to do it and along the way i tell them you can do it with a script you can try it and this out so i don't even use uh, anything for that but i like using the um so-called um, back burner. So that that's what I use for my batch rendering, uh, really. We, uh, why use plugins like Copy2? What's wrong with Control V and Control C? Uh, Alexander, <laughs> Control C doesn't exist in 3ds Max. So Control C actually creates a camera uh, or uh, allows you to jump to a view. Uh, so uh, that's pretty much it. So uh, Control C doesn't exist in Corona and Control V is uh, only going to allow you to copy the object in the same scene in the same position. So Control V is a copy. Uh, control C, uh, I can see that it doesn't even do anything any uh, anymore. So uh, yeah, uh, so that's it. That's why we don't uh, use it. I believe both 3ds Max and Blender are good. 3ds Max is more like professional career, but uh, still Blender has ca uh, capability to make uh, cool stuff. Uh, that's the most sane thing I've ever uh, heard. Uh, yes. Uh, um, so Blender is for a lot of enthusiasts and I noticed a lot of passion in the comments uh, in our comments section. Really, I I, I kid you not, though, those guys are priceless. Um, no, but uh, when it comes to, let's say, more polished career, career uh, 3ds Max is currently the industry standard. And the fact that Blender has a little bit uh, bigger user base is not necessarily real because at this moment, a lot of people don't disclose that you're using 3ds max and uh, blender by default is going to give you the info plus it's free so some people just 
install it and that they are counted as users but real users real industry users are a few but still many uh, it's not that the same standard but it's definitely going to be more and more popular because uh, free is a very fair price um, but at the same time it, blender does have its up, uh, ups and downs it's uh, it tries to be everything and uh, it's good. It's good. That's what I'm going to say. I get. I guess uh, I will cause problems. Uh, so away I f um, out of high school when I did a game development course in which I was taught Blender. I felt uh, in love with the creating realistic images, and then I got into ArcVis. Uh, then I failed out of the course because I wasn't uh, making games, but pretty images. But I paid for um, because now I work full-time as an ArcVis artist uh, using 3ds Max, of course. Maximus, congratulations. Uh, um, also, uh, when it comes to ArcVis and general amount of libraries, resources, tutorials, and just community-based, uh, if we don't count the passionate uh, fanboys, uh, 3ds Max has better community uh, from what I've noticed. It's just more welcoming, it's uh, less aggressive, and when it comes to uh, 3ds max real people i mean not somebody who just installed the students version uh but because students version is not really going to be anything that uh, this um, let's say discredits you but if you are a professional you're you've got the license you probably know something about the software already so you're going to be probably somebody who is going to be talking from a standpoint from a professional so at that point it's easier to communicate on the forums with 3ds max people People, while there's a lot of immature people on Blender and it really takes like you like two or three clicks at, on any Blender forum I visited to get to some inappropriate stuff. So they really derailed the conversation, conversation real fast. So not to rag on, on Blender people, you're, I love you guys, but uh, you need to chill. Um, uh, okay, and the reason why 3ds Max is used in the industry instead of Blender is because it's more com uh, compatible with things like Revit and other Autodesk software. Reason two is, is the next message. Also, BIM, Beam software is very important. I think on learning 3ds Max because I study Re Revit and I see that the uh, workflow is going to be smoother. Uh, uh, yeah, definitely, definitely that's going to be it. Okay, um, we got a little bit carried away, so let's create those nice columns that uh, we were supposed to. So <clears throat> just to make this easier, uh, again, I'm going to be posting uh, this whole shape as a uh, part of our um, as a, a part of our uh, floor plan that you're all going to be getting so it's going to be easier for you to create the same object so no need to panic that I'm working with something that's already done also uh, you can see that we have to create those uh, simple yet uh, somewhat complicated objects which are the tiles so to show you the tiles again we need to uh, make sure that those are going to be seamlessly wrapped around our column but we also need those to be neatly applied to the background and I'm going to be doing this almost the same way as my student did but we're going to do a bit of a plot twist on it uh, to make it even more useful uh, so everybody's going to be able to use it the same way is there a uh, possibility to put an override material into render elements um, not exactly override material because it's not going to be possible the way you imagine that it's uh, going to happen but what we can do is add a texture and that would be probably it uh, but unfortunately there's no way of uh, rendering two seamless images that are going to have uh, let's say uh, option uh, sofa option number one sofa option number two that's not really yet there uh, but there is something coming that is really going to be extraordinary I believe it's going to be quite soon either in this version or the next one I don't want to spoil the fun because I don't know exactly how it's going to work out but it's going to be big and it's pretty much going to be what you needed um, okay 
Hey sir, what is the gain if I subscribe to your course and everything is now exposed? Uh, the gain is that you're going to get three webinars uh, per day. Uh, what we're exposing here is not exactly the end because uh, really what you can get from one hour or even if you're going to watch all the videos, you're going to learn a lot. But uh, what we teach our students is the techniques, how to properly set your workflow, how to um, how the industry works, how uh, all the know-how be behind the camera, all the settings, all the materials, in-depth dive into Corona. Plus, you're, as I said, three webinars per week. Um, so that's approximately an hour. Access to our live support that is on our chat. So you're going to be able to ask as many questions, just like you're asking right now, but to, well, uh, directly to our support, which is going to help you with any issue you may have. We also give Give our students uh, licenses plus we're going to be able to give you um, a lot of very useful materials like models textures and well the know-how uh, so pretty much uh, here we're giving you a small demo so think about it think about all you have on our channel as a glimpse of what you can get from our training um, so um, thank you, sir. Was waiting for this uh, live cause. I have a project in calling uh, to design an existing hotel lobby reception. Uh, so hi, yeah, thank you. Uh, that I mean, that's amazing, and I really love the fact that you're going to use this. Uh, what this? What software is this? It's 3ds Max. Is there a possibility? Um, is uh, wait a second. Is there a possibility to put uh, an override? Okay. Hi, Mike. What's about a live session about day five? Would it be possible, or is it an interest? Uh, yeah. Well, uh, I would say that D five is also a very nice rendering engine, and we're planning on uh, talking about it at some point, but maybe not today. We have a lot of videos scheduled ahead, and we don't necessarily have enough time to put it in our schedule. But at some point, Ronald, uh, I. Think Think it's going to be inevitable we have to talk about uh, such an amazing software like the 5d render is actually quite cool um, so just between me and you and this is not an official uh, info I was planning on making a video comparison of, of a couple of rendering engines and they were so simply um, let's say they all had their ups and downs but uh, in the end I, it, the differences were, weren't that critical to make the video even interesting, so we just uh, stopped it. Uh, so, um, t uh, yeah, talking to uh, t talking is fun, but must be working as well. My boss tells me that all the time. Oops. Okay. Go. Uh, good luck. Uh, so, please can uh, tell. Uh, please can someone tell what software is that, and is it possible to run on Windows? Uh, Marcelo, it's 3ds Max, and it runs only on Windows. Uh, so. <laughs> Maximus, thank you. Uh, greetings from Bulgaria. Oh, nice. Uh, Tor, nice to have you. Uh, so I have did a project in Bulgaria, a few of them actually. Uh, you can actually check out uh, Club Exe uh, on the beach bar. Uh, yeah, I was helping a very talented uh, architect from Bulgaria. Uh, that's um, Chavdar Todorov. Uh, amazing guy uh, so very cool thing uh, but probably you shouldn't be disclosing all the info uh, although uh, let's just create the column instead so we need to wrap this around and there are a few ways of doing it and obviously we want to make sure that we have all the details we need so the easiest way to do it would be to just convert the object to a little poly just like I'm doing it right now, uh, grabbing this part and then going to uh, create shape from selection linear. And we can just uh, go here. Uh, then we're going to just select uh, this shape that we just created and we can now uh, have a little bit of fun. Effect pivot only, so it's exactly where we need it. And I need to create those uh, uh, those blocks or uh, whatever those are around or to wrap around this object. So. The easiest way for me would be to just simply uh, go for array modifier with this object. But 
it has its own ups and downs but in this case i believe it's going to be really the best so we can go for z count go up and this time we're going to actually go for a count on x-axis zero and we can go for relative offset grid spline and we can go for this spline oops nope that was a misclick uh, so i'm going to pick a spline and just go here so now the fact is that the object that i started with has a little bit of an, a wrong offset so it's all going to come down to pivot i should probably adjust it but i can also change the starting point of the object and just transform the position so i can just move it relatively quickly like this so it's an easier way to do it. Then if I'm going to continue, I can just apply a few more steps. You can see that in this case, it's almost perfectly fits my object and I'm going to be able to adjust it in a second if I want to. So I'm just going to go ahead and apply a few more rounds. So in this case, X count, let's just continue. And here, this is going to be a very cool thing because we can just apply gajillion billions of them real quickly and make sure to just add as many as you need. So in this case, I could also use path deform to give me the same solution. But in many cases, you're going to be uh, asked to have a little bit of randomization on those objects. We could also use uh, some kind of scattering method. But in this case, we probably want to have, for example, local rotation, incremental uh, aligning random increment, and we can just go for uh, some kind of value. So let's go for 50%. And if I'm going to go here for that, you can apply a little little bit of more lifelike um, imperfections. So we can just go ahead and change it progressive, alterating incremental. So it's going to come down to what we really want to have. And in this case, why it's uh, okay. Am I doing it wrong? <laughs> uh, no. Uh, so let's go ahead and all okay. Okay. Incremental, random, incremental, progressive. Yo, so the random should be just that, but it's appearing that I have a little bit of a problem here. So scale random. Oh, local. I'm just in the wrong section. Randomization. Sorry, my egg on my face. So now we're in the randomization, and that's when I can do the randomization. That's just me being a silly boy. Uh, is this? It's midnight, 1 a.m. watching this tutorial. Thank you, KK. Uh, really nice of you. Uh, Yasin, hello from Turkey. Uh, thank you very much. Hey Mike, have you done any character modeling or simply uh, ArcVis? I did some uh, character modeling in the uh, in the past. I did use ZBrush and other software uh, like such, but that's not for me. I prefer doing different stuff because it's just something I am more passionate about. And uh, because of that, I just chose to uh, stay with uh, this uh, pr um, profession instead of going into character animation or some kind of, uh, well, different development. It's just mm, something I like more. Uh, so um, why do you ask? Oh, uh, do you have any kind of uh, nice stories to tell about that? Uh, Okay, uh, you're from India. Nice to and uh, nice to have you then. Uh, okay, so here we've got our object, and I can just go ahead and copy the object. So we're going to cut the copy the modifier. Uh, wait a second, I've got the copy here. Okay, so perfection. But why is it so laggy? Um, th that's due to the fact that we're actually online, and a lot of times it's going to be like this. So let's make sure to allow ourselves to just go ahead and copy this object. Copy real quick. You can see that now, since I've copied it, you're, we're going to have to change the spline. So we obviously need to change the shape for the copy and just select a different shape. Got it. And now we're going to have to adjust the amount of rotations our object is doing. We could do a quick maps with the same method I shown you at the very beginning of our webinar, but I don't want to do it. So I'm just going to type in some random values until we uh, just say that it works. So you know what? I don't like what I did. So let's delete this part. Let's delete this line as well. 
and we're going to remake the shape based on the base of our object because I found out that uh, maybe I should not be scaling the object which wasn't perfectly aligned to the element that we begin with. So let's go ahead and start with uh, this object. Okay, create shape from selection real quick, a linear, and now we're going to go ahead and continue. Oh, okay, so um, we've got it. Now, again, we're going to do this, pl paste the modifier that we just copied with some of the settings, but let's just go for uh, go ahead and add the, sh the right shape, perfection. Now we're going to change the count to 70, 72 maybe, uh, so it's going to have some slide gap bit in between, but it's still going to have the nicer um, nicer looks. Also, 1% of difference is also going to be uh, very simple to use. And now we can continue. So in this case, I'm going to just go ahead and unhide the objects so it's easier for me to work with. Again, we could adjust it or add another element in. But due to the fact that the top column is going to be slightly bigger, I could just add one more line in here and it's going to be forgiven because it's going to look still good and it just goes inset of that object. And that's really going to be the end of the whole story here. Uh, so now we've got our two objects selected and if I copy it, we're not really going to have the desired effect. So again, I'm going to have to create a new copy of my modifier. I could also so do something easier, convert this object to a double poly, copy it all the way, and just then apply a few array modifiers on top of it. It's just going to save me a little bit of time. And you know what, I failed again, because this column appears to be actually bigger. And uh, there are some problems with the model, I guess. But this is when this gets a little bit tricky. Because if I'm going to copy so many objects, uh, the way I'm doing it, we're going to run into billion gajillion polygons. And at that point, it's going to be actually hard to deal with the scene. So that's when we could consider using a different method, which is going to be based on uh, just simply scatters. So how about we do that instead? Because I kind of started uh, getting a little bit laggy um, because I'm streaming and I'm planning on rendering this scene with you at some point. Uh, I'm also getting a little bit slowed down. So we might actually have to uh, consider doing a part two for this uh, over uh, next week because uh, yeah, it slows down and I kind of added a few too many clicks. But uh, let's imagine that we can also skip to another scene and uh, start talking about the next uh, best thing. So uh, first of all, let's delete this thing and let's add, uh, apply this the right way. Because yes, those are very nice ways of doing this element. But I believe that the best thing that we can do is apply this via simple scatter. So let's go ahead and uh, go for that. Now, standard primitives, we're going to go ahead and start with simple um, chaos. Where's chaos? For some reason, look at that. Chaos is just right below here. For some reason, uh, because of some of the update, uh, up, some of the plugins I have, uh, so I need to uh, look for it, and it's getting a little bit less convenient to work with. Uh, so let's see if it uh, okay unlocked. Nope, we lost it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, my bad. Uh, okay, so how about we grab one of those parts uh, to get exactly what we needed. Uh, those are going to be slightly uh, uh, rotated already. So we're going to have to uh, do some tricks to fix it. So real quick, let's just fix what I'd broken. Uh, so how do we position an object like this like, perfectly straight? Uh, one of the easiest ways would be to just try to rotate it like this as close as we can and then we can force it to be straight by scaling some of the parts so it's going to be more blocky and this is 3d so I'm going to be allowed to do that it's not going to be an issue for me in some cases if that would be a product well somebody would be actually angry at me but it's a uh, it's just a, a, some kind of brick that we are not going to be uh, really that and um, uh, uh, caring about. So I asked because I enjoy doing both ArcVis and character modeling and I know it uh, should, uh, 
I know I should pick one or to find work because it's difficult to be a pro in two separate fields. Uh, you can add characters to your archivist or you can add good uh, backgrounds to your characters. This is not going to be discriminating you from both. Uh, so what I would like, uh, what I really think you should think about is what gives you more pleasure. If it's 3D um, archivist, go for that. If it's the characters, go for that. Or just use, uh, take one as your hobby and the other one as your job. Uh, so okay, objects. Now we're going to go for distribute on targeted objects that's it then we're going to go for instance object and that's well not it why does it happen first of all we've got problems with our uh, uh, with our pivot with our setup and with our scale so first thing I'm going to check if uh, whether my object is scaled it is so we're going to go ahead reset X form and you can see that now the object is on the surface so that's a plus now we need to make sure that it's going to be flat on its back so it's easier to position again reset X form and it looks a little bit better convert the object to a little poly if we want to add uh, some detail so for example chamfers or whatnot now we're going to go ahead and select our uh, chaos cosmos um, chaos scatter we're going to go ahead and go for scattering and here we're going to go for surfaces uh, we keep that on but in scattering uh, surface scattering we're going to change it to, from um, from random distribution to UVW map and that's going to pretty much create this very nice precedence where we can actually see that each brick is going to be placed in a more uh, organized manner so what do we do now we could work with the spacing if we want to and get more of them in but that's going to probably be problematic at some point because we're going to have a worse display so we need to go to our display options so display and limits we're going to add one zero here and just for the fun of it I'm going to go for a full preview and we're going to be looking at this object from the perspective that I want it now we're going to turn off the random rotation so all the objects are going to be neatly organized and this is when we can actually start having a little bit of fun all of those uh, objects or all of those uh, UV, uh, all of those elements are going to be placed on our object based on the UV w mapping so let's go for cylindrical and if i'm going to change the tiling i can set it very precisely to how many tiles i want in my object and it's going to be super easy because here i've got more options than i would have in uh, let's say uh, just uh, the scatter alone so four is going to be perfect for me now we're going to go for a v tile and in this case two is going to be almost perfect so let's go for one point eight in my case uh, and I think it's going to be good enough or we can just also manipulate the height of our box if you want to be super precise so this also brings us to a very cool precedence because if we have the measurements of our box we can also check what we can do measure so it's 0 0.66 uh, it's 10 almost 11 centimeters actually uh, the length and width is a six and a half actually that's not going to be that easy to copy so I'm not going to do that but we could just do it if we want to but uh, let's keep this simple and actually apply the right UVW mapping okay uh, so now with that out of the way you can see that uh, this object is neatly um, let's say um, populated with the objects we have to be very precise to make sure that those are going to be closer to one another so uh, hold your left alt and just go ahead and add a few values but i think i'm just going to go for simpler solution okay this is going to be it i'm wasting a little bit of your time so sorry for that uh, let's just uh, skip this part where i'm playing around and let's just go ahead and do the second wall uh, so okay here we've got this wall but it's based on a simple object we could create literally quite literally we could create a simple plane and play with all of those objects but again I want this to be a bit more uh, lifelike I want this to have more precision or as some kind of ability to be changed so let's go ahead and create it in our main scene so so far let's uh, select this wall uh, make sure to create some kind of area that we're going to be putting our object on either go for a rectangle or just some kind of uh, other uh, means so I'm just going to go for rectangle auto grid and we're going to make sure to place it here so okay 
this is going to be perfect and just go ahead and go slightly outside of your view we've got it uh okay uh, hello from Pan uh, Punjabi, India. Uh, great work. Thank you very much. Uh, he hello from Kurdistan. Uh, Renoir, thank you. Uh, I yesterday watched your webinar four years ago. You are so advanced now uh, and you're doing it very well. P.S. You make amazing progress. Thank you, Stefan. That's really nice to hear. Uh, yes, we're all making progress. So that, that's probably why we're here. And yes, four years ago, I was a little bit more nervous when I was talking to you guys and it wasn't that easy. So thank you for that uh, encouragement words. Uh, first time here seeing it live. Uh, Gab Gabriel, nice to have you. Uh, so. What we're doing now is we're adding those um, bricks on the wall. Uh, again, those are super simple, no need for detail. So we're just going to create a, a simple brick that we're going to be playing with. So this is our plane or let's say our area where we will be scattering the elements. Uh, so let's just add this box in. And this is going to be quite cool to, it's going to be quite cool to make sure to add the right size, the right height, the right measurements, because obviously it's just going to be easier for us to play with an object like that. So six and a half centimeters by one centimeter. So this is now our perfect box. Uh, just so the, bo the box is going to be a little bit more interesting, I'm going to add a small inset on it maybe a little smaller actually okay maybe a bit bigger and now we're going to just extrude this inwards a little bit so it's going to have that detail if you want to you can also add some chamfers but those are just optional uh, things that will look better in your render if you're going to be adding uh, some extras it's always cool but don't overdo it because it, it can cost you a few uh, more minutes in rendering time so it's good to not overdo it but chamfer is always welcome at least one level so the object is going to have those nice areas to get a little bit of shininess on the edges but uh, if you are afraid that one edge is not going to be enough go ahead and add two and remember to change the option to chamfer the uh, sorry smooth the chamfers only so it's going to be just easier and now you can see that this object instead of just being sh super sharp uh, on the edges it's grabbing a little bit of extra reflection uh, on the on those edges that were dull before and that's going to be extremely helpful um, auto smooth just for uh, the sake of it and now we've got pretty much uh, object our first object is ready so now we need to make sure to place this or position this object using scatter again so we're going to go down chaos scatter chaos scatter again and we're going to use the same method we used a second ago um, auto grid is off go to our modify panel here we're going to click objects distribute on target objects it's going to be our plane um, and instance object again this is it this is going to be a small chaos. So well, first thing, transformations, let's uh, put this into uh, some order, zero it is. Now we need to make sure that we also put some kind of nice UVW mapping. So UVW map, uh, <clears throat> in this case, I'm going to go for UVW mapping and we can uh, take sorry we can take advantage of the fact that we know the measurements of the object which we set up uh, earlier so those were quite simple 11 by six and a half so nothing special right so we're going to be able to do exactly that in a second so we're going to go for um 11 by six and a half okay so this is going to be our box bear with me uh, we also select our scatter and we're going to make sure to uh, first of all go for surface scattering okay where is that surface scattering and we've got uh, our uvw mapping uh, and we are going to be using that but for some reason i'm getting a little bit nervous again because i cannot see that it reacted uh, to my scattering but that's probably due to the fact that right now the transformations are sorry not transformations that display is incorrect so uh, let's go for areas wait a second do we have still the yes it's working 
okay it's working it's working but the objects are over overlapping due to the fact that i haven't changed one of the uh things okay so uh sorry 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 uh spacing 100 percent okay that's what I, that's why I was panicking a little bit because uh, you know it's a live stream and at this point uh, it it's been two hours so please forgive me for not being so precise and fast so let's go for just one more click so it's easier for us to display everything at the same time and now the fun begins because we know exactly that we want to have a little bit of difference or distance between the elements so in that case I can just go ahead and since my UVW mapping is exactly the size of my object I can just go ahead and add something bigger so 110 and we're going to have a little bit of spacing easy easy so let's lower that or go for higher value but this also introduces us to a very weird problem because right now the spacing on the top and bottom is not the same so at that point i'm going to have to actually go oh that's why six and a half so uh, I, I thought that I'm going to have to scale it. So, okay, we've got the, the right scaling, but I was wrong uh, in the settings. So we're going to go ahead and change this yet again to zero point, um, wait a second, where is it? Uh, just 0 0.5, so there's a little bit of distance, just like on the reference, you can see that there's a little bit of healthy distance between them. And now we need to rotate them in a very funny manner. So we have to add the right rotation on one of the axes. So that's going to be in transformations. So what transformation we want to add is obviously the rotation. If I'm going to add Y rotation, it's not going to be it. If I add the Z rotation, as uh, so X rotation, that's exactly what we need. I want to have, uh, let's say, uh, 15 by 15. And that really produces something that's going to be extremely, extremely um, uniform and that's cool but that's not, not exactly what i want i want to have a little bit of jitter so it's more realistic so let's go for let's say 14 to uh, to 16 so that one percent is going to be extremely important for our visualization okay but now we've got everything in one position nothing is uh, yet aligned and uh, are your eyes tired? No, not really. Uh, not yet, at least. Uh, thank you for that. It does. Do I look tired? I hope I, I'm not uh, looking like that. Uh, I haven't. Uh, I learned more stuff from your webinar, really. It's helpful and great, sir. Thank you, Krishna. Uh, RAM usage should also be more optimized. Using scatter is not uh, affect uh, the size of the file. In fact, it will smaller and if you copy every object separate. Yes, that's exactly it. Uh, when we use scatter, uh, will it use more RAM in this? No, no, no. That, thank you, Max, uh, Max uh, for uh, explaining that. Uh, that was very nice of you. Uh, so. We've got this object, now I'm going to copy my uh, scatter and we're going to do a bit of a trick in a second. So copy the scatter. Okay, the second scatter is going to have a nice setting again. So that setting is going to be minus 50 uh, to minus 16. So that way we're going to get, have two scatters that are identical, but will have a slightly different settings because both are going to have a slightly different behavior. So uh, for some reason, I cannot see the second scatter. Why is that? Again, it's just going to be something related to uh, some kind of problems that occur randomly. So let's hide the first scatter for a second, just to be sure. Okay, where's the scattering? Okay, enable, disable, and now we're going to be enabling you, uh, sir. Rectangle one, okay, thank you. Now that's, for some reason it just didn't load. Uh, anyway, we got it and we now need to cut this in a very nice fashion. So how do we do it? First of all, I want to create those uh, pyramids, right? So we go for a line, auto grid, and we're going to be auto gridding, creating this simple shape like this so go for the top bottom top bottom top bottom so this is going to be it close spline yes and here I'm going to allow this to be a little bit bigger like this and we're just going to go ahead and move that so we're going to have a lot more to work with and now the fun begins because we're going to have uh, the is and is not options activated so uh, this is just areas. So let's go for the bottom. And uh, we've got the area, sorry, just 
a simple stream and my computer is sweating. As, uh, now, spline includes, in this case, it includes only this area, but it also needs to include the objects on the right axis. So this is going to be quite important because otherwise we're not going to get the right result. Allow me to demonstrate by actually activating this, um, this uh, scatter, so enable, okay, and it's actually not even visible at this moment. So we have to just, for some reason, just reload it, I see. Wait a second, let's re-add this rectangle, okay. So, uh, it is what it is. So the second one is going to be spline excludes. So we're going to go ahead and uh, try it out. I'm using, um, let's say, a, dem a demo or um, one of those uh, y-axis okay so because I, I am using the mm, so-called um, daily build uh, or release candidate for our uh, 3ds uh, corona 11 uh, right now some of the options aren't really that uh, fluent uh, so sorry for that it's just uh, me not the software I'm just using the uh, release candidate not the released version y-axis again and we've got a nice cut between those two and the beauty of this method is that right now if i want to change something about the shape or i want to change the shape entirely I, or just um, change the bricks if i want to i can do that and it's going to be uh, just easy to do uh, without any reper repercussions because i can do whatever i like because it's going to look amazing so again we're going to be able to do this and uh, we can now start by building a little bit of our scene. I believe that we're uh, going on for a little bit too long at this moment so I don't want to uh, be too uh, boring to you guys so I believe that we're going to do another an, a follow-up on this one uh, the next um, next Tuesday so I'm going to create a special webinar on uh, this topic because we're getting closer to a point where I'm actually getting a little bit tired and I don't want to uh, be just sitting and clicking uh, to uh, on this screen so uh, real quick uh, we can just uh, have a little bit of a go and uh, to show you that it's extremely easy to create this kind of effect with uh, just a few scatters uh, so we're basically uh, at the right position but we still need to uh, do something more by mistake I've added physical not corona physical material it's not a big deal it's just going to have different uh, uh, reflections but as you can see we've got everything we wanted and what I really want to put emphasis on is adding that extra two or three um, uh, three um, percent percent or two degrees to add that distance is very important for your work because if everything is going to be uh, just 100% the same it's going to be boring uh, also in our case we have to go a little bit lower to the transformations because right now we're going to have a bit of a problem if we don't because right now we need to add that extra five because without it our objects are going to be basically inside of the wall uh, also just to demonstrate a little bit better why the rotation randomization is important right now though that looks like some kind of tic tacs uh, so we're going to jump to the second scatter and go to the same settings with our uh with our transformations uh uh wrong value and guys you're a <clears throat> You guys are amazing uh, catching all uh, everything I'm doing. Uh, I wasn't expecting that. Uh, so cool. Um, <clears throat> do you know about Uzbekistan? Yes, I know it. Yes, I know it. Uh, so let's go for five and five. Uh, let's go for a little bit lower. So here we've got the rotation. Don't go. Uh, we got the rotation and now we're going to go for something around 5 to 14 and you can instantly see that the difference in the scatter and how it behaves is just tremendous. Let's go for some more aggressive value so we can see that all of those flaps now look more realistic. And that's super, super, super cool because it's going to be the difference between the night and day with your scenes. If you're going to have just a little bit of that extra, uh, it's also going to have a big, it's going to have a tremendously big impact on your scene. Let's create one material, 
and we're going to uh, go for it today because I believe uh, we're getting a little bit tired, all of us, uh, so uh, especially me. Uh, so I don't want to be rude on, uh, like that, but yeah, I really don't want to also be too boring and slow. Uh, so it would be a nice idea. So, so 0 0.1, go for just metal in here. Uh, let's change this to more metallic color. So just uh, brownish rust. Uh, okay, so in this case, let's apply it in. Uh, exclude it from the override and this way the object is going to be uh, just seen the way it is so i'm going to uh, show you the difference between uh, the, the scatter um, with some randomization and scatter without it uh, because that's something that i really really want to emphasize that is important for all of your renders i think it's great you use a scatter because it makes your lessons more accessible uh, for everyone since it's uh, it includes the uh, renderer uh, yeah i try to make it make sure that everybody's going to be able to use exactly uh, the tools that we have in uh, in 3ds max or in the only plugin we're using for so it's corona uh, so the point is to make sure that everybody's going to be able to follow along. So minus 14 by minus 14, you can see that this looks like a brick wall. It's not exactly going to have a nice reflection. But if we go for minus 5 to minus 14, you can see all of that beautiful randomization. And at the same time, we can go for small randomization from uh, minus, uh, let's go for minus 2 to, uh, to just 2. And this further enhances how the reflection looks like and that adds so much more soul to your shots because without it it's going to be just well exactly the same as everybody's else you're going to get exactly the same uh looks it's just going to be not natural and at the moment the golden wall is created we just need to re-import the column and we would be probably good to go but i'm going to reserve uh, just a few um one more webinar like this uh, it's going to take us approximately 45 minutes to finish all the materials in this scene uh, so so I think it's going to be a good thing to end it here uh, so we can try out the next time. But we're going to be doing it either this Tuesday or the next Tuesday. So uh, we're going to do an extra follow up on this webinar. Thank you very much for your attendance. But at the same time, I'd like to like. Um, I'd like to ask you for one special favor, guys. Please make sure to click a like, and once the webinar is done, if you could be so kind and go back to our uh, webinar and leave a comment, just let me know what you think, ask some questions. I'm going to be answering to those questions, all of them. Um, so it's going to be a huge thing. It helps us to beat the algorithm. Also remember that right now we are recruiting. We are looking for people that are going to, uh, we, uh, sorry, the enrollment for our training is uh, in uh, in the um, well it's currently running so if you want to join the January 6 uh, um, group make sure to join it right now uh, so uh, you're going to be able to do that by visiting Viz Academy Co UK uh, on top of that make sure to um, remember that in 2024 our Viz Academy is going to be absolutely different we're going to have more content for you so please subscribe right now so you don't miss it and this is it from me for today. Thank you very much for your amazing support. It was such a blast to have such a nice audience. Uh, you really made this so much better. Once again, thank you and see you next time. Uh, so thank you, ArcLife, Krishna, Alexander, Maximus, and everybody else who, stu uh, who uh, stuck with this webinar till the very end. So next time we're going to do the materials and we're going to do some lighting. Once again, Thank you and see you next time. Bye-bye.